Thank you for watching Estra's TV. I'm Estra. Too many people have been silenced by harassment and intimidation after being in a car accident. These efforts, in my opinion, are an attempt to keep the benefits needed by people injured in traffic collisions. Harassment and intimidation of the injured typically goes beyond overt or covert surveillance. Online, this can be shadowing, hacking into accounts, bur burying information under false or fake links, along with burying official web links in hopes of those seeking information cannot find it. From my perspective, bullying tactics are used to force individuals to give up auto insurance claims, employer benefits, social security disability claims, or long-term disability benefits. Unscrupulous behavior, money, and power of those with influences in some cases force people injured in car accidents to accept the delays, denials, or elimination of benefits in conjunction with increased recovery time due to harassment stress. Most people injured in car accidents rely on the hopes of them getting through the process and overcoming obstacles. But is this a good idea? Because the power corporations have, in my opinion, it's easy to sway people by using their means, spread false information, or get others to align with them in order to receive financial gain. These actions and behaviors far exceed standard disability surveillance from my perspective and turns into outright bullying tactics. People who stand up and voice their objections tend to face even more harassment and intimidation. Law enforcement typically works with these corporations and do not have or do not provide any legal assistance to those being harassed because they are on the payroll of these corporations as a private investigator or of other means. Why is it so important to document the harassment and intimidation? Because you may find it hard to believe the levels of bullying faced by the injured. People involved in a car accident typically are ill-equipped for what they endure, and particularly because they've never typically seen it before, except perhaps on television, and may not have the resources or knowledge on how to stand against it. However, pictures and videos of these experiences will help demonstrate the behavior. Looking up and seeing such beautiful rainbows, in fact, two of them, can renew the soul. It's a reminder for changing a system that no longer works for the injured or sick. People learning about what happens to protect investors' bottom lines while disabled live in or near the poverty levels because their benefits are significantly reduced or eliminated. Did you hear that? Their benefits are significantly reduced or eliminated. Hopefully this will bring long-deserving awareness to the issue facing people filing claims and bring fair policy changes which will help the injured. This includes making harassment and intimidation unacceptable. Let me say that again. It, it means making harassment and intimidation unacceptable. Being injured should not make anyone a second-class citizen. Have you noticed that, by the way, how many other areas of of our society now, many people are becoming second-class citizens because they have no jobs, they're not having any food. Just the basics that we should have are being taken away, not by the majority of people, most people do, but people who have power at this time in society. And by the way, if you want to do something about that, you need to vote in 2014, the midterm elections, because by 2016, you may not have anything close to being left. So that's just an FYI. I'm going to go on here. Where rights can be taken away just because of coming up against privilege and power, which in my opinion has almost annihilated the entire middle class. That's what I'm saying. Get out and vote. The outrage from my perspective about this should be heard to the ends of the earth. Unfortunately, conditioning and confusing the truth with mistruths, we see that so much. 
truths turned into mistruths. Make sure that you are actually taking a moment to analytically evaluate what somebody is telling you. It's very important. A few twisted words making it sound something like it is can mean that you and your family may be making, receiving major losses just because someone's telling you one thing and doing something else with the other hand, okay? So, unfortunately, conditioning and confusing the truth with mistruths have in recent years become a way of life. We see it everywhere. We see it on video. We see it, I mean, it's just, unfortunately, nowhere you can't find it today. The only way for change is each citizen standing up for respect, dignity, and fairness. When you see it, call it like it is. Tell, it what, tell other people, this is not right. They're doing this like taking unemployment benefits, but saying they're supporting them. You can't be on both sides. You can't talk out of what? Both sides of the mouth. Although people today, some think that this is a good idea. They can't. It's not right, okay? For starters, the realization of having a right to be in public does not equate to be the privilege of harassing the disabled because they're outside. Who came up with this stupid idea? calling it like it is it's very stupid to say we can harass you and bully you and try everything possible to make you give up your claim because you're outside you know this is not uh, like the kids going out to play you know during the day at school going out and, and and getting bullied even there you have people that say stop this is wrong don't bully just because the disabled or the injured go outside you want to harass and intimidate them That's not right. That's no rocket science there. It's very obvious. People go outside to do their activities. Surveillance means observing somebody, not interfering with their day, not bullying them, not trying to uh, make them terrorized by your actions, all those things. This is wrong. Don't tolerate it and speak out on it. So if they thought that this is something that harassment and intimidation was okay do you can you imagine some of the things they would be trying to do for example they would take disabled electric chairs when at the store so the people who couldn't walk or made it difficult uh, couldn't really shop the way that they want most people if they're using the cart they're using it because they need to have an endurance to get through that process also taking close part or parking spaces for people having problems to walk you think that's not harassment absolutely is that surveillance not in my opinion okay what about them standing in front of you looking in your face for one to 15 minutes in hopes of staring you down or ignoring you or bullying you saying we're there go someplace else we don't want you there we want to get on with our lives don't bother us go find something else to do you know What about every time you open the front door? They're there. What are they there for? Why are they passing around around in front of you for day in and day out? First of all, this tells you something. Who has the money and the resources to, to do this day in and day out? Not the average person. Now, if they went ahead and paid the average person the unemployment benefits, stopped cutting their SNAP benefits and doing things that help people lift themselves up, that's what they really should be doing with the money. But don't let me get off key or off uh, the subject because I could really go off on a few things on this because from my experience, it's just not right what they do. Okay. First of all, when you go to the bathroom in public, that should be a private thing. Do they have? Why should they have to go, the right to go to the bathroom with you? Come on, get out the bathroom. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, you go out to eat. You you want to have? You want to go into a restaurant? You want to just uh, relax a little bit? They're sitting right in the in the booth next to you. They may not have even gone to this restaurant before you. I mean, they're following you into places they don't normally go. And certainly not, they don't do everything at the same time you do. I mean, it's just constant. You're getting on the freeway. You know, most people who've been in car accidents, usually driving is not, you know, necessarily one of the easiest things for them to do. So they're jumping on the entrance and exit freeway ramps, cutting in front, moving to the side. And God forbid they have a car accident or two, which they're notorious for having, from my opinion, because 
they can. I, I guess they don't have any of the repercussions when they have accidents because, in my opinion, they, I see them have way too many, which you'll actually see in the video here. So this is something wrong with this picture. Attempts of doing these things underground will not prevent harassment and intimidation from coming to the surface. Obviously, this is where this video comes from. It comes to bring out, to tell the story, so people will listen and learn from it and say, hey, I had no idea that people were going through these changes. And most of us don't usually know about several things like this unless we actually go out and read on the forums or the or blogs because almost everywhere you see out there on the Internet, you find this happening. The harassment and intimidation, unfortunately, is not uncommon. But who do you also see out there on those same pages? You see the same people who are doing the harassment and intimidation. Don't believe me? Go out there and look. Look up complaints for insurance or uh, for uh, complaints uh, for people who've been in auto insurance accidents or file a claim. Or it, it could be an auto insurance company. It could be for employer benefits. It could be Social Security disability. It could be a long-term disability company. So. It's just, uh, it's out there in full force. All we have to do is take a moment to look at it and say, we wouldn't want this to be us. We don't want this to happen with us. We need to change this. In fact, let's change the local laws and have ERISA reform, and we should make it a high priority. It really is time to end this abuse. Stand today and say, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. One person at a time, this can be changed. Remember, they are making their investors wealthy off of your premiums, your work, and other contributions. As a group, standing together can work for real and lasting change. A change that brings fair treatment with respect and dignity. And receive the benefits the injured deserve. Are you being harassed and intimidated? Speak out today. Share your story. Make comments. And join in support of helping people injured in traffic collisions. Any of us are only one accident away from harassment and intimidation. Let's get it stopped. Their goal may be to overwhelm you emotionally or physically. Yet, by controlling your own state of mind, you are standing up against harassment and intimidation tactics. Hold on and document their actions. You count, you matter, and harassment and intimidation because of being injured should not be a part of it. Don't you agree?